Today, we're diving into One Piece and showcasing the top five tear-jerker moments that tug right at your heartstrings. Doing it for the crew, for a brother, as a mother, for the future, and for the children. In One Piece, even the fans from Japan can't help but shed a tear during many of these deeply moving scenes. And from these, I've picked those moments where characters risk their very lives for someone else. So let's get into it, shall we? And if any of these moments resonate with you, a thumbs up and a subscribe would be awesome. Now, if by any chance I miss your favorite scene, please drop a comment and let me know. Just a heads up, this video might have some spoilers, so tread lightly. All right, without further ado, let's jump right in. And hey, grab some tissues and stick with me till the end. The first is Belle Moray, a formal naval officer and the mother of Nami and Nozico. The three of them have no actual blood relation, and they met on the battlefield. When Belle Moray was severely injured during her naval days, thought she might as well die, before her appeared three-year-old Nozico holding baby Nami. Seeing the innocently smiling Nami in such a situation, Belle Moray lost the will to die. Even at the brink of death, she managed to survive in her hometown, Kokoyashi Village, with the two of them. Nami and Nozico are not real sisters, but three people without a blood connection who met on the battlefield. However, you could say the three of them had a bond deeper than blood as a family. Belle Marae is characterized by her shaven head and is a constant smoker. Being a former Marine, she's tough and the very image of a strong woman. Apparently, Belle Marae was a notorious troublemaker when she was young, and when she decided to become the mother of Nami and Nozico, the whole village opposed her. But she was determined and declared in front of everyone, I will raise them to be outstanding individuals who won't lose to these times. Raising them alone in a mandarin orchard, Belle Marae saw Nami grow to be just like her, and Nozico, the responsible elder sister. Belle Marae often sacrificed her meals for the kids. But one day, a casual comment from Nami led to a quarrel. During a sibling fight, Nami said, We're not real sisters, are we? At those words, Belle Marae scolded Nami. But Nami, young yet understanding their financial difficulties, retorted impulsively, Wouldn't it be better if we weren't around? If we were to be taken in, I wish it was by a wealthier family. With that, she stormed out of the house. Later, reflecting on her behavior and feeling it was immature, Belle Marae lamented. I'm preparing a delicious dinner, so please bring Nami back, she pleaded with Nozico. But at that time, Arlong and his fishman pirate crew arrived at Kokoyashi Village. Arlong's demand was 100,000 berries for each adult and 50,000 berries for each child. Those who couldn't pay would be killed. Nami and Nozico hid, and Balmaray's house, located away from the village, seemed to have gone unnoticed. However, they were discovered due to the smoke from the dinner preparations. Being a former Marine, Belle Marae confronted Arlong, but stood no chance. By the time the villagers came to her aid, she was on the verge of death with her left arm crushed. She realized she could settle it with money, but Belle Marae had only 100,000 berries. Not enough for all three of them. However, since Nami and Nozika were adopted, there were no records of their marriage or birth. So, no one realized the existence of the two kids, and only 100,000 berries would have been a sufficient. Nami and Nozico, who had just returned home, immediately hid upon sensing the strange atmosphere right in front of their house. The villagers believed that if they could discreetly help Nami and Nozico escape to the sea, everyone in the village would be saved, and they felt a sense of relief. However, as Arlong was about to leave, Belmoray interjected. That money is for my daughters. I don't have enough for myself. Despite the chance of being saved, the villagers were all stunned when Belmoray deliberately made such a statement. Tearfully, Belmoray declared, Even if it's just in words, I want to be their mother. They are my children, aren't they? She hugged the two with her crushed arm as Arlong pointed a gun to her head. The villagers resisted, but in front of Nami, Nozico, and all the villagers... Arlong shot her in the head as a warning. Even with a gun to her head, Belle Marae remained strong till the end. The scene where she smiled and said, I love you, Nami and Nozico, is memorable even after 20 years. 
It was later revealed that all the boats on the island had been sunk at the time. There was no way to get Nami and the others off the island. Being a former Marine, Belmaray knew the cruelty of the pirates and realized this was the only way to protect the children. Next up, the real mother of Ace, born as the son of the pirate king, Gaul D. Roger. She may not have appeared much, but she was characterized by her beautiful long and vivid golden hair. She spent her days on an island named Batarila in the South Sea where she gave birth to Ace. Her first appearance was in a flashback in volume 56, but the name Rouge actually appeared as early as volume 1. It wasn't in the main story, but on a page explaining the meaning and origin of pirate flags, a time before SBS existed, saying, first we must speak of the pirate flag. The content explained that the pirate flag is called the Jolly Roger and symbolizes death. The origin of Jolly Roger has various theories, such as deriving from the French word Jolie Rouge, meaning blood, or Le Jolly Rouge, meaning the Jolly Red One, or Old Roger, meaning devil. Indeed, the deep relationship between the Pirate King, Gold Roger, and Rouge can be anticipated to have been planned since Volume 1. It's unimaginable how much of the story was conceived back then, but it never fails to amaze. To divert a bit, the reason for Rouge's death is precisely because she carried the child of the Pirate King. However, she wasn't murdered. After Gaul D. Roger turned himself in, the government sought to eradicate anyone related or associated with him. If she gave birth then, her child would be killed. Knowing this, Rouge did the unthinkable, keeping Ace in her womb for an extended period of 20 months. She safely delivered Ace after the heat died down. However, after carrying him for such an unprecedented time, her body reached its limits. And after uttering the words, This child's name is Gaul D. Ace, she passed away. It was her incredible maternal strength, beyond anything the government could imagine, that kept her child, Ace, alive. Out of respect for such a formidable mother, Ace continued to go by his maternal name, Portgus D. Ace. Following Belle Moray, she is a character whose tragic story and maternal strength remain memorable. Next, the third person is Ace the former 2nd Division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates and Luffy's sworn brother. He is the true son of Portgus de Rouge, who missed her life to give birth to him as mentioned earlier. After a safe delivery with the help of Garp, he was raised as an orphan under a bandit name Dayton, alongside Luffy. However, his childhood was quite tumultuous. The Pirate King, Gold Roger, who created the Great Pirate Era, was a figure hated and despised by society. Though Ace hid his lineage, he always felt inferior because the world referred to Roger's child as the demon's child. Even as a child, he began to wonder, was it okay for me to be born? Despite these feelings, Garp's words to him, you'll understand as you live, and his encounter with Luffy gradually changed Ace. Then, after meeting Whitebeard, Ace served as the second division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. Later on, he pursued Teach, who committed the taboo act of killing a comrade from his own crew. After meeting Whitebeard, whom he affectionately called Pops, he could not forgive Teach for tarnishing Pops' reputation and chased after him alone. And after a duel with Teach, Ace was defeated and handed over to the government. Subsequently, a public execution for Ace was decided upon, and the Whitebeard pirates, as well as Luffy, appeared to save him. This led to the Summit War at Marineford, the major event in this story, involving those helping them and the Navy headquarters and the Seven Warlords. During the live broadcast of the public execution, the world learned that he was the real son of the Pirate King, reminding him of his childhood feelings of inferiority. Furthermore, at first, Ace had told his younger brother Luffy that he didn't need to be saved. However, seeing so many people genuinely trying to save him made him realize that he was indeed needed. As a result, Ace gradually began to desire life. Though he once wondered, was it okay for me to be born, and felt that he could die at any moment, in the end, Ace wanted to live alongside Luffy. Through Ace's adventures and way of life, he came to understand just how much he was loved and how many people were willing to act on his behalf. 
And finally, with many sacrifices, Luffy managed to successfully retrieve Ace. With the goal of rescuing Ace achieved, Luffy and the Whitebeard Pirates escaped, seemingly heading towards a happy ending. However, just as they thought so, Admiral Sakazuki's words, a bunch of cowards fleeing and Whitebeard is a loser from a bygone era, made Ace halt and rage. The name of this era is Whitebeard, Porcus D. Ace. Ace, who had always resented the idea of a father, couldn't stand the insult towards Whitebeard, who was truly like a father to him. Even though he knew he couldn't win against Sakazuki, who possessed the superior magma magma fruit compared to his own flame flame fruit, Ace still challenged him. While Ace and Sakazuki were fighting, Luffy, who had been pushing his body to the limits to save Ace, finally reached his breaking point. After he collapsed from his knees, Sakazuki, not missing that brief moment, swung his magma fist at Luffy. Ace shielded Luffy with his own body to save him, and in doing so, was pierced by Sakazuki's magma fist. Held by Luffy in realizing his life was ending, Ace left his final words for Luffy to convey to everyone. For loving someone as damned as me, someone with the blood of a demon in him, thank you. Saying this, Ace passed away with a peaceful smile on his face. Ace, who had been disliked by people worldwide since his childhood, always wondered if it was okay for him to be born. It becomes evident that for him, setting out to sea was a journey to seek that answer. In reality, Ace never once voiced his ambition to become the Pirate King. When they met again after growing up, Ace's ambition was to make his beloved old man the king. The cruel irony was that just as he found the answer to was it okay for me to be born, his life came to an end. However, I personally believe that regardless of the will of D, Ace was able to find his answer, and that perhaps was why he was such a serene smile in the end. As a fan, it was a heart-wrenching and difficult scene to accept. Next up, the fourth person is Edward Newgate, a great pirate who served as the captain of the Whitebeard Pirates and once stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Pirate King, Gold Roger. After the death of the Pirate King, he became the best in the world in both name and fact, referred to as the strongest man in the world and the man closest to One Piece. With a generous heart, he accepted outcasts of the sea, like Ace. He treated his comrades as family, calling him his sons, and he himself was called Old Man. The trust he had was immense, and he was revered by all. However, in reality, when sharing drinks with Roger regarding the way to Raftel, where One Piece is believed to be. Even when Roger offered to tell him, Whitebeard dismissed it, saying he wasn't interested. In a flashback scene where Whitebeard was a member of some pirate crew, he personally stated that he wasn't interested in treasure and had always wanted a family since he was young. Therefore, it wasn't that he changed after emerging as Whitebeard. The form of the Whitebeard pirates can truly be said to have been the dream of Edward Whitebeard Newgate. There was a reason he held such a dream, and his childhood was revealed through Marco's words. Whitebeard's hometown was poor and couldn't pay the heavenly tribute to the celestial dragons. Thus, they couldn't join the world government. As a result, it became a lawless island where kidnappings were rampant and the number of unfortunate orphans increased, with Whitebeard being one of those orphans. With such a background, it's said that he had always longed for a family. Moreover, after becoming a great pirate, he continued to send money to his hometown for his entire life, which is why he was said to be quite stingy. Whitebeard's end was the same as Ace's during the Paramount War held at Marineford. The Whitebeard pirates, who stormed the Marine headquarters to rescue Ace, were indeed the world's strongest, centered around the efforts of the division commanders, especially the first division commander, Marco. They continued their assault. They did not give any ground, even against the Marine headquarters. Finally, Whitebeard made his appearance and temporarily subdued the Marine headquarters with his overwhelming power. He was tragically stabbed in the chest and with a great sword by the very comrade he called his son. This was a strategy devised by Sengoku, who was then the fleet admiral of the Navy. A lie had been spread, claiming that Whitebeard was making deals with the Navy at the expense of his subordinate pirates' lives. 
Whitebeard, not expecting to be stabbed by his own son in the midst of such an important battle, was caught off guard and easily pierced. However, from a line spoken by Marco afterwards, we learn, even if caught off guard, he should have been able to dodge an attack from a comrade. This suggests that Whitebeard's health was already severely deteriorated, which played a significant role in the incident. Even so, I love my foolish son, Edward Newgate. The Whitebeard pirates are momentarily thrown into chaos, but even after being stabbed, Whitebeard demonstrates his undying love for his family. By creating a path of retreat for his crew, he proves this point. Whitebeard's spirits lift, and despite being stabbed, he displays his unrivaled strength as the world's strongest. Against all of the Navy's admirals, he never stops advancing, overpowering them with the power of his tremor tremor fruit. But even he can't overcome his illness and accumulates more and more injuries. After losing the goal of rescuing Ace, he fights the Navy headquarters alone. Even after losing half of his face in a battle against Admiral Akenu, he continues to fight, declaring that one piece is real before eventually succumbing. But even in death, he stood tall, defiant. His back bore no scars of retreat, solidifying his legendary status. Next, the fifth person is Pedro, a member of the Mink tribe living in the country of Zu and leader of the combat squad Kozuki Samurai. Being a jaguar mink, he's often scouting from high places and is thus known as Pedro of the Treetops. Originally the captain of the Knox Pirates, his bounty is an impressive 382 million berries. Though he ventured into the seas considering himself an explorer, his naivety landed him as a spot as a wanted man. This suggests that he unintentionally fended off pirates and the navy, earning him his bounty. Regardless of the reason, after Luffy's confrontation with Eni's lobby, even his bounty was 300 million, showcasing Pedro's infamy. Currently leading the Kozuki Samurai, Pedro is calm and assesses situations rationally in battle and, most importantly, has a strong sense of duty. When Sanji was kidnapped, Pedro stated that it would be dishonorable for no mink to aid the Straw Hat Pirates to whom they owe a debt, so he decides to accompany them to Big Mom's territory. However, he had another reason to accompany Luffy and the gang. Pedro reveals that he had previously visited the territory of the Big Mom Pirates. Drawing on past experiences, he aids in infiltrating Big Mom's territory, but doesn't share everything. By this time, Pedro had realized his time was running out. After being captured by Big Mom in the past, a roulette game decreed he lose 100 years of life. His comrade Zeppo was drained of 30 years of life due to the Soul Soul Fruit and perished. The remaining 70 years were then demanded from Pedro, but due to pleas from his fellow townsmate, Peckhams, only 10 years were taken. Determined not to die there, Pedro gouges out his own left eye to further reduce the time, escaping at the cost of 50 years. But at that time, Pedro was only 27. Effectively, he had lived 77 years, making his remaining time uncertain. Pedro sees in Luffy and his crew the spirit of Roger and his crew, whom he met as a child. Believing they are the ones the Kozuki clan has been waiting for, he felt this journey would be his last. And then, the moment comes. As Luffy and the crew attempt to escape from Big Mom's territory, they are cornered by her oldest son, Pero Sparrow, and his candy candy powers. Brooke and Chopper are on the brink of death from Pero Sparrow's ability, and Big Mom is quickly catching up. Seeing no way out, Pedro, without hesitation, chooses to detonate a stash of explosives, taking Pero Sparrow with him. Thanks to Pedro's brave sacrifice, Luffy and the crew manage to escape. But even after giving his life, Pero Sparrow is seen alive. This was a moment that highlighted not just the grief of Nami and Carrot, but also the sheer might and ruthlessness of the four emperors. So in this article, I've highlighted five memorable scenes that personally stood out to me. Which scene touched you the most? There's also speculation about whether the characters I introduced are still alive. But please understand, I've compiled characters who, at this point, seem to have lost their lives. Each of their backgrounds, tragic pasts, One Piece is filled with scenes that can't be watched without shedding tears, isn't it? 
This channel posts summaries, explanations, and ranking videos related to One Piece. If you like One Piece, we would be happy if you could support us by subscribing to our channel and commenting. Thank you for watching till the end. We'll see you in the next video.